Hello friends, this is Utz, according to an eyewitness report, and today I'm going to try to break down and explain how to use the yellow bottle for the clown, which is a new ability that he got recently as of one of the latest updates that most people seem to neglect to a large degree and never really use. And it is a shame because it is a really fun and powerful part of his kit, but the advantages of using it are not immediately obvious. Let's compare them both and see where they stand. On the one hand, we've got the classic afterpiece tonic, aka the purple bottle, and on the other we've got the new afterpiece antidote, aka the yellow bottle. The purple bottle breaks and immediately goes into effect, slowing down any survivor by 15% that goes into its gas cloud. It also makes them scream, gives them blurry vision, they cough for a little while, and after they leave this gas cloud they'll still be slowed down for 2 seconds or so afterwards. This is very important to say, only affects survivors. The cloud himself can go through his gas and be completely unaffected by it, which is really, really good. The yellow bottle, on the other hand, however, is a little bit different. It doesn't activate immediately. In fact, when you break the bottle, it will be white. Only two and a half seconds afterwards will it activate and turn yellow. And at that point, anyone going through the gas will get a 10% movement speed boost, which will last for five seconds after you leave that gas cloud. And here is part of the issue. This yellow cloud takes a little while to activate and it actually affects both the clown and the survivors themselves. So there is a risk here to give a speed boost to the survivors, which of course is not in your interest. If both you and the survivors both get that speed boost, you will be on the same relative speed as before. So there will be no net loss or gain of speed, but if the survivors get the speed boost and you fail to get it yourself, you will actually be giving them quite the boost and quite the advantage over you, which is obviously the last thing you want to do as a killer with your power. So this is already immediately a risk associated with this bottle and a reason why you shouldn't use it carelessly. You also shouldn't throw them carelessly because using one of the yellow bottles will consume from your bottle ammunition pool and this will eventually run out and you will be forced to reload and you don't want to be reloading too often as that will slow you down. On top of that, throwing a yellow bottle, same as the purple one, resets your bloodlust. If you chase a survivor for an extended period of time, you will normally typically build up bloodlust, which will speed you up and give you a better chance to catch up. But if you throw bottles badly, you will constantly reset and remove this bloodlust, which if you're not being careful could extend your chase for even longer. So, knowing this few scenarios where the yellow bottles can actually backfire on you, how do we actually use them? Well, we're gonna go over every single scenario where this yellow bottle could be used. Uh, first, you can still use it, same as a purple bottle, to interrupt survivor actions. If a survivor is doing an action in front of you that you really, really want to stop momentarily, say a hook save or a totem cleanse, you can hit them directly with a bottle to stop them and maybe give you a chance to interrupt what it is they're doing. You can also use the new and improved cigar box add-on that will actually show you the auras of survivors around you anytime you're invigorated by the yellow bottle effect. This is a great tool to just go around the map and find survivors earlier on or later into the match if they're trying to be sneaky. And it also makes your normal use of the yellow bottle better in every single way since you can perfectly track survivors. So this is a great powerful add-on that will make the yellow bottle even more powerful in every scenario. Of course, one of the simplest ways you can use yellow bottles is to just speed up the time that it takes for you to traverse across the map. You can place bottles as you move across the map to maybe get from point A to point B a little bit quicker. But this is generally not the best use of these bottles. The time that you save by using these bottles to move across the map is really not that much. So unless you're really, really trying to clutch it and get to a generator and you really, really need that extra second, this is probably not the best way to use these bottles. They can also be used preemptively before you perform certain actions so that you get a small boost after you're done performing such actions. Again, this is not the absolute best use, but sometimes it can come in clutch. You could preemptively throw a bottle to get the speed boost after you kick a pallet, after you kick a generator, after you kick and destroy a breakable wall, after you close the hatch so that you can start searching for the survivor faster, you could also do it after you hit a survivor so that you get the speed boost when you're done recovering from it. Although this is risky because it could also speed up the survivor if you're not careful. 
and also you could do it after you pick up a survivor that you've done from the ground so that you're a little bit quicker getting to the hook. Uh, this is really not that worth it, but if you anticipate that the hook that you're going to try to get to is really far, or if you want to make it to the basement, this speed boost of 10% actually will help you get there faster or make it there in the first place. Here's a comparison so that you can see what that looks like. So it is, it is a little bit nice, although it's not extremely game changing. There is one case, however, where it's always, always, always a good idea to preemptively throw a yellow bottle. If you want to reload, but you still at least have one bottle in your inventory, it is a really good idea to throw a yellow bottle slightly ahead of you as you reload. Since you were going to reload anyway, this toss doesn't really slow you down at all, and in fact, it will give you a small boost of speed when you're done reloading which will always, always benefit you. So immediately include this in your arsenal. It will speed you up over the course of your game. Now, one situation where the yellow bottles really begin to shine is when you're playing around a drop pallet at a loop. In the situations, if you're not using any bottles, the survivor will typically run you around a lot, maybe ball the pallet, maybe a mind game here and there, and you would eventually, after a little while, maybe after Bloodlust kicks in, get that hit. This can take a little while. With the yellow bottle, however, you have a very, very good chance of hitting them before Bloodlust even comes in. You want to throw it where the survivor is and then go there. So by the time you're there, the bottle is active, the survivor is away and you get the speed boost, which will result in a hit. You can even do a little bit of a mind game back and forth and it works really, really, really well. A purple bottle here would achieve a similar effect. However, Purple bottles do not really help against pallets because survivors can fastball pallets even when they're slowed down by the bottle. Whereas in Windows, they can't really do that. So this is one of those scenarios where yellow bottle might actually be better than a purple bottle. However, the real strength of yellow bottles is that there's nothing stopping you from using them in conjunction with purple bottles. Here is an LT wall loop where I'm going to place a purple bottle to stop a survivor from looping me around it. And as you can see, it did the job, but it wasn't enough, and the survivor still bolted the window and got away with it. But now if we use the yellow bottle in conjunction with the same purple bottle, we actually managed to squeeze a hit out of this interaction. Here's another example, where in this very powerful loop, even using a purple bottle results in the survivor getting to the pallet and slamming it on our head. This is very, very difficult. This is such a good loop that a purple bottle can't even stop it. However, again, if we combine the yellow and the purple bottle and we mine him a little bit, we can actually squeeze another hit out of it. And here's another example of the shack where we use two bottles to secure a hit that would probably be hard otherwise. The general idea behind all of these strategies is pretty much the same. You want to control where you are, ideally at the pallet, force a survivor to be on the opposite end, and then preemptively throw a yellow bottle first and usually a purple bottle after, and time it well enough so that you'll get the speed boost at the best time, they won't get to it without doing a full turn, and they will instead be forced to be slowed down and eventually take a hit. With a bit of creativity and experience, you could probably apply these two bottles preemptively basically anywhere and shut down any loop. And this will only get better with add-ons, so it really will come down to the survivor being smart, realizing what you're doing, and maybe leaving the tile altogether, which, again, shouldn't be too terrible for you. You're forcing them out to go somewhere else that's less safe. And with that out of the way, I think I've told you everything I know about the yellow bottle so far. I will continue to learn and maybe make a follow-up video if I learn anything else. You let me know if this was useful or if you're starting to see clowns using more and more. See you in the next one.